Good evening, I'm Patricia Vallone with a CTV News update. The baby formula shortage now impacting millions of families began for the county's WIC program more than two years ago. However, the issue became bigger when Abbott Nutrition recalled some of its products and shut down its infant formula plant back in February. Abbott is the only vendor for the state's WIC program. Maryland officials ultimately decided to expand the types of brands clients can buy with their benefits. Families can now purchase store brand ready to feed in plant-based formulas. There were previously a lot of parameters surrounding plant-based formulas um, and that such, you know, requiring uh, a doctor's notes or um, some type of documentation. All of those parameters and requirements have been rescinded temporarily to allow our families the flexibility to purchase whatever is on the shelves. Benson says county WIC participants who are struggling to find formula can reach out to the county's hotline for help. That number is 301-856-9600. The local teachers union is calling for changes and greater financial investment in the county school system. The Prince George's County Educators Association has launched a video ad campaign. It highlights the struggles that teachers are facing in the classroom. The union says educators don't have enough time during their designated planning periods, which by contract are at least 45 minutes. Yet Dr. Donna Christie says oftentimes teachers are asked to use their own planning time Time to cover for absent colleagues. Asking for additional planning time, we're asking for more of those those out, outside non-classroom, non-instructional duties to be relieved, that there are other people that could be doing some of those things. If they want to have any hope of fulfilling all of those vacancies that we know we have, they're going to have to offer a really competitive compensation package and really do something about these workload issues. PGCEA has about 10,000 members. Well, it's that time of year again, graduation season. Graduates don their caps and gowns today as the University of Maryland held its spring commencement ceremony. The keynote speaker was 1993 alum and creator of the Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Jeff Kinney. So let us embrace the hard work before us. Today is called a commencement because it is not the end of your journey, but in fact, the beginning of your journey. Your experience here at the University of Maryland has changed you. It has made you stronger and wiser. The world needs you and you are ready for it. I don't have high hopes that you'll remember much about what was said here today, because I know that when you think back on your graduation, here's what you'll remember. Man, it was hot. <laughs> but I'm hoping in the passage of time, a deeper message has penetrated your minds and perhaps your hearts as well. UMD also celebrated the summer and winter 2021 graduating classes as their commencement ceremonies were canceled due to the pandemic. And it's also graduation day for the students at Bowie State University. The university held its 2022 spring commencement this morning. Dressed in their caps and gowns, graduating students flock to the Bulldog Stadium today. Dr. Aminta Bro, president of the university, welcomed the students and their families to the in-person ceremony. Data from the U.S. Census Bureau shows that just 24% of Americans hold a bachelor's degree and only 14 hold an advanced degree, 14%. Research also shows that the majority of jobs in the future will require at least a bachelor's degree. So here we are at Bowie State University. We press on just as we have for over 150 years. Bro says more than 600 students walked away with their degrees today. Bowie State is the oldest HBCU in the state. And in health news, the latest COVID data indicate a rise in cases and positivity rates. The Maryland Department of Health has confirmed 3,016 new cases. The positivity rate statewide is over 8%. In Prince George's, it has jumped to 10.34%. And three Marylanders have died of COVID over the past 24, 24 hours, excuse me, and 426 people have been hospitalized. You're watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. Coming up, she left the school board to run for a county council seat. Belinda Queen talks about her campaign right after the break. Stay with us.
I expect it to be a lot easier. I thought it was gonna be a piece of cake. I didn't know what step to take next. I was transitioning from the military. I was a vehicle gunner. An avionics specialist. I was an MP, military police. My friends thought I could do anything. I missed my unit, my family. Playing with my daughter, I, I felt like a stranger. I was overwhelmed. I couldn't sleep. I just wanted to be by myself. I didn't have a clear sense of what to do next. I was too proud. And then I thought, if I'm going through this, other veterans have gone through it too, too right? I started to open up. And it made a huge difference. So I reached out and I saw that I wasn't alone. Because before I was able to take on my next mission, I had to take on just taking care of myself. To find purpose. purpose. We are not alone. Other veterans have transitioned from the military and overcome mental health challenges. Visit maketheconnection.net. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. Jessica has been through a lot in her life from early childhood. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She came in looking to complete her diploma. Uh, she had a family she had to take care of. Anytime she needed help, we provided her help. She realized that we were here for her. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. My graduation, it was something I will never forget. I couldn't explain the emotion I was feeling because people like you and me sometimes may have doubts in yourself, but I feel that everything's possible. Jessica's future is brighter than ever. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back. The National Weather Service has issued a tornado watch for 10 Maryland counties. They include Howard, Frederick, and Baltimore counties. The watch area is in northern Maryland and parts of Virginia and West Virginia. The watch goes, will stay in effect until 7 tonight. We are less than two months away from the primary elections in Maryland, and one of those on the ballot is Belinda Queen, who is running for a county council seat to represent District 6. Queen stepped down from her position on the school board in March to devote her energies to the council race. Prior to the school board, Queen was elected to the county's Democratic Committee. She says she was a fighter with the people in mind. When you reach out to me, then I'm going to stand up and speak out. There's no doubt, no matter what issues they have. I've chaired a District 3 and 8 police coffee supper. I've been a member of the, of the coalition and an officer. And whenever a resident have an issue, I'm the first person to say, hey, let's do it. Let's stand up. Let's speak out. Because we have a right. We pay tax dollars and we deserve more. Right here in District 6. Not, and that's in every part of District 6, from Bowie all the way down to Capitol Heights, Forestville, the West Bay. It doesn't matter where you live at, Upper Marble, in the District 6, community, we have to make sure that every need of every, every citizen is met, and that's why I'm running to make sure that. And with the primary set for July 19th and no Republican challengers in the race, it's likely the winner of the primary will win in November. Smarter development, a better quality of life, and making all schools high performing. Those are just some of the issues Patrice Murray is focusing on in the race to represent District 4 on the County Council. Murray previously worked with Steny Hoyer and ran former Senator Barbara Mikulski's Prince George's office. Murray also served as town administrator for Capitol Heights. I have experience at every level. I've dealt with budgets. I've dealt with legislation, policy, you name it, the gamut. Also, because I am one of you, I am just an everyday person went to work every day, raised my kids, took them to softball practice and ballet and came home and did that whole thing. M my husband and I work in this community to make things better. And Murray faces three other candidates in the primary. Students arrive at La Plata High School and find a Confederate flag flying from a flag police pole. Junior ROTC students made the discovery yesterday morning. School officials were notified and the flag was removed. Charles County school officials say it was an isolated incident. They also say the students and staff should feel welcome and safe at county schools. Still to come on CTV News tonight, a local activist once again eyes a seat on the county council. We'll talk with Crystal Oradatha next after the break. 
Hey, how you doing? Hey, Mason. Hey, Mason. Got a new house. It's looking pretty cool so far. A place that I call home. I'm teaching Louise how to cook some lasagna. It only takes a spark to make a fire start. <laughs> Thank you. Let's study, please. I think I finally found a place to make my own. A place that I call home. This place that I call home. Thanks for staying with us. Last election, she lost by only 30 votes. That close race has spurred Crystal Wardafa to once again run for the Prince George's District 7 Council seat. The longtime C. Pleasant resident is the co-founder of PG Changemakers. If elected, she would be the first outwardly LGBTQ person to ever sit on the council. We have an opportunity um, to have a county council that really reflects centering the community. And that's one of the reasons that we saw what happened with redistricting. They purposely tried to write me out of the district so I couldn't run. And they did that to other candidates as well because they understand what's at stake right now. Uh, the county council tried to raise our property taxes during a pandemic. Um, they've tried to move developments in our community that are the total opposite of what the community wants. And so I'm really fighting to ensure that we have community-based development. We see less tobacco stores, liquor stores in our community, that we actually increase the services for our senior citizens. We really invest more in our education system. And so that's really what's on the ballot right now. For more information on her campaign, log on to the website at the bottom of your screen. Well, Maryland has a new public defender. She's Natasha Dartique, a graduate of Howard University Law School. Dartique has been with the Maryland Public Defender's Office since 1996. She's currently the acting district public defender for Baltimore City, and she officially takes office on July 1st. Well, today is Bike to Work Day, and Prince George has celebrated the event with 10 pit stops across the county where cyclists got a chance to learn about bicycle and pedestrian safety. One of those stops was at the Largo Kettering Perrywood Community Center. This day in particular is set aside for those who can actually bike from their home and get to uh, their work and do that in a way uh, that is safe. So you have to be aware of your role as a cyclist, you know, to do your part, using hand signals, uh, being deliberate in your movement when you're riding your bike, uh, what the rules of the road are for cyclists. More than 100 bike to work events were held across the region. And now let's get a quick check on your three day weather forecast tonight. Mostly cloudy, warm with a low around 75. Saturday, mostly sunny with daytime temps reaching a high near 95. Sunday, mostly sunny, a chance of evening showers and a high near 90. And Monday, partly sunny and slightly cooler with temperatures dropping to the mid 70s. And now for your community calendar, the Prince George's County Department of Parks and Recreation announces the premiere of The Bell Affair. The historical film drama tells the courageous story of the Bell family. The Bells were enslaved in the county and in the district during the early 19th century. The film will, will be shown at Public Playhouse Thursday, June 2nd at 7 p.m. The premiere is free, but reservations are required. For tickets, visit joesmovement.org forward slash the bell affair. And that wraps up our CTV News Update. I'm Patricia Vallone. Have a great weekend.